Hello there and welcome to a new video of my All Weapons Explained series for Jack the Lions 3. In this one we are going to go over the sniper rifle section. These guns all have a high range, they require quite a lot of action points to fire and they also have a natural armor penetration due to the caliber they're using. The next interesting point about them is their special attack which is called pin down which is basically a time delayed shot. You use two turns for one shot but as a reward you gain a guaranteed hit. The enemy is being marked which is also a guaranteed crit so if you ever get marked by that skill run out of the line of sight of the sniper or yeah well you're you know what's coming your way. That's one interesting thing, especially when you manage to get your mercs up on a high vantage point. This skill can really, really be a nasty surprise. Right, so apart from that, we have to go over each and every model to talk about the strengths and weaknesses. As usual, there's timestamps down below. And let's start with the baseline model, which is for this category, the Rifle 98, or GW 98 if you prefer some German. So this is, as we have it with all the categories, the weakest one of them. So it has a relatively low damage per bullet. The range is a little bit gimped. 32 ain't bad, don't get me wrong, but it can get better. The crit chance is really disadvantageous and the aiming bonus is at least the, one of the best sets point about this type of thing. You can mount yourself a suppressor, which turns this into a silent gun, which is invaluable because this is your first ready available sniper rifle and it does a pretty good job at that. And apart from that, we can mod this gun either into more overwatch cone, which I personally wouldn't recommend because this gun has a very narrow overwatch cone to begin with. Its real strengths lie in extra scoping. I personally am a little bit sad that it has no option to mount the sniper scope times 10 which would increase the aiming bonus per se apart from that well don't invest too much of your parts and uh, valuable things into this gun because as i said it's the baseline model putting a suppressor on it and getting yourself probably some cheap thing here going but it ain't that necessary well improved iron sight for example is a really really good add-on for this but don't go too crazy other guns outperform this one by far Okay, next point, the Dragunov. The Dragunov is the assault rifle among the sniper rifles. It is the only one that can be operated in burst fire, which is a really, really fun thing, considering the fact that you still have that insane damage per bullet that you have on sniper rifles. This uh, damage of 36 is still almost double of the regular assault rifle damage. You have to factor in that burst damage, uh, burst firing will reduce the damage per bullet, but it's still a lot of bang for your buck. Apart from that, you have a standard range, you have a decent crit range, uh, crit chance, and you do a lot of noise with that thing. The main downside of the Dragunov is its very, very low aiming bonus. This is not too much of a precision gun to begin with. You can go for a compensator or a suppressor, depending on your playstyle, it can be uh, can be mounted with a bipod, which is always amazing if you want to go for sniper action, and it really mitigates the low aiming bonus to begin with. And most importantly, you can go for the times 10 sniper scope, which, well, it balances out the gun to be a decent uh, long range uh, option if you'd like to. Apart from that, choose to your own liking and your playstyle. You can adapt into a higher magazine size. And the really cool thing here is this weapon also has the option for a light stock. So you could mount it into Overwatch fire as well, given the fact that we have um, reflex sight and those things in, at our disposal. The heavy stock is really good if you want to go for more aiming precision. But well, with the Dragunov, I like to think that Ideally, you play it as a burst uh, rifle, a burst assault rifle kind of thing, but it can be also operated as a long range version, but here it will get outperformed by other guns again, so don't go too crazy if you expect to go for a real full-time sniper rifle. So the Dragunov eats 
Russian 7.6 millimeter bullets. The uh, Rifle 98 was uh, going for NATO bullets. So you have the uh, standard assault rifle bullet usage here. Okay, let's go for the M24. This one is the first of the uh, sniper rifles I introduced here that has some real damage on its bullets. So here you also have the same light armor penetration because it uses the similar caliber, if I remember correctly. And it has a very low crit chance. That's the biggest downside, alongside with the fact that this gun is cumbersome. So the M24 is ideally used from a high vantage point where you don't expect to move too much. You get a lot of damage from this gun and the modification into a suppressor makes it the complete sniper experience. As an add-on, we get to use tactical devices. The UV dot makes this gun a lot more precise if you have the uh, chip to spare. The bipod is, in my opinion, a must-have if you want to go for a full-on sniper action. It comes with a 5x sniper scope uh, pre-installed. I highly recommend the 10 times if you want to go for a real good aiming bonus, or you can also go for the thermal scope if you prefer those bonuses. I always have a hard time deciding between these two guys. So apart from that, we could also mod into some Overwatch action. Not my preferred playstyle, but it's an option after all. Magazine expansion, always a good thing. These guns all have a low magazine size. And here we also can modify into Overwatch action with the light stock, which is really crippling your accuracy from aiming though. So don't use that on sniper versions. The sniper version wants to run the heavy stock, which is an amazing add-on. If you go for the full package here, the M24 is very precise, a very high damage. It has a little bit of a problem with armor penetration, but that is pretty much the only downside alongside with the cumbersomeness of this gun, but you can mitigate that with Merc stats. So this is a really, really cool weapon, given the fact that the, the ammo it uses is widely available, really. You only use a bullet per kill, basically, so it's really powerful. Good, next model, we go for the M82. So <laughs> this thing is a beast. So it, it comes with, 60 damage per bullet. This is really a lot. It fires 0.50 caliber bullets, which is the downside right away. It costs really, really rare ammo to fire this thing. Also, this thing comes with a whopping amount of nine action points per shot, making it really, really cumbersome to use. Also, speaking about cumbersomeness, it's also so heavy that you have the cumbersome trait. What can I say? You have built-in medium armor penetration though, which is amazing. You have a really high range, which is also amazing. The crit chance is also decent. This thing, if you have the action points to, to use it, it's a wonderful beast. We can modify it into a suppressor, of course, so we can operate this, <laughs> this beauty here also silent, which is uh, kind of like a good joke. It comes with a built-in bipod, which I love personally. We can also um, expand the magazine, nothing special here. And we come with the typical, with the usual suspects on the scope range or, uh, yeah, you only have the iron sight as the only non-scope upgrade option here. But, well, I think I don't need to explain that much more about this one. It has clear downsides. The attack cost is really, really huge. I cannot emphasize it enough how much of a downside this is about that gun. But, well, if you have somebody who can handle the, the stress of this gun, <laughs> have some good fun with it. It's also extremely ammo efficient. Did I already mention that you only need one bullet to kill a person? I like that one. Okay, PSG-1 is the next one on my list. This little beauty here comes as an alternative to the M24. It has a really nice damage per bullet. It has a really high crit chance, solid range, standard attack chances, uh, attack costs, and a good aiming bonus. So this weapon is all in all a good all-rounder with practically no real downsides with a solid crit chance. It's probably one of my favorite uh, weapons due to the missing downsides altogether. The bipod is not built in. You have to mount that. And I, as I already said, I recommended 
uh, warmly. The heavy stock is perfect for sniper action. And we have the typical array of sniper scopes available. We even get to use tactical devices, which is a really, really good thing if you want to be a little bit more precise. And we even have some alternatives on the magazine front. What I want to mention here is it's one of the few sniper rifles that can expand its magazine without action, pos uh, action point cost increase. I don't think that's too much of a big advantage, but there it is. We can, of course, make it silent, and yeah, the PSG-1 is... Personally, I, I prefer it over the M24, because the damage difference isn't too much. It uses the same caliber, it has no, it has not, not the, the issues with the cumbersomeness, and yeah, just your own liking, I'd say. Next up on the list, something really, really special. We have the Winchester 1894. This one is basically the shotgun among the sniper rifles. That's, that's, I think, the best way to put it. You have a very low range on this beauty here compared to the other sniper rifles. That's really a joke. But you have a really high damage and a lower attack cost than usual, which is a fun thing to go for. Also worth mentioning, this weapon has no longer the pin down skill because it basically is no longer a sniper rifle, I guess. We can mount in the suppressor into it. It can be modified for barrel modifications, which I personally love, because either we go for a really good precision with a sub-average range, but it's still okay, 30 range ain't bad. Or you go for the short barrel, which is emphasizing the characteristics of, these, of this gun even more by lowering the range again, but geez, you have only attack costs of 5 with this thing. With a damage of 43, this thing is wild if you use it on short range. We can also mount in all kinds of different scopes, making it compatible for either Overwatch playstyle or Precision playstyle, which is really, really fun. Big downside about this beauty comes with no built-in armor penetration because it uses .44 caliber which is a little bit too small for that business. But yeah, I really like this one. It's very unique, it's very special, and it's kind of bonkers. I don't really like that one because it still feels like a sniper rifle with, in terms of damage dealing and all those things, but you have a lot of customization options how you want to play it. So let's go over the unique guns. So you can either fast forward if you don't want to spoiler yourself or... Uh, Bear with me. So, the Gold Fever is one of the unique guns. You've noticed it's not modifiable. And, well, aiming bonus 10. Super heavy armor penetration. I didn't even know that this existed before I saw this gun. And, well, 50 damage. All in all, this thing also has a very low attack cost with 6. Yeah, what can I say? It's just uh, the armor ignoring gun, I guess. So, we have... Apart from that, as the uh, other unique option, the Confidante. This is a unique version of the Winchester, which comes with an even lower range than what you can mod, but even a lower attack cost that, than you could possibly mod with the same damage. So this thing basically fires like a pistol, but hits like a uh, sniper rifle, which is a fun combination if you can get your hands on it. The real downside of these two guns is also worth mentioning, very, very low clip sizes. Okay, that's been that. I hope you found this overview insightful. Personally love sniper rifles and um, yeah, leave me your comments down below and feel free to leave a thumbs up on that video. Consider subscribing, I'll be delighted if you did. And there's a playlist link down there leading to all the other Jack the Lions 3 info videos I did. Until then, thanks again for your time, have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you soon again. Bye-bye.